For though I live in the body, I do not wage war in an unspiritual way. Since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, or some versions say carnal, but powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. <laughs> we demolish arguments and every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to obey Christ. And we are ready to punish any disobedience once your disobedience has been confirmed. Wow. And then this kind of goes into identity right after it is. Verse 7. Look at what is obvious. If anyone is confident that he belongs to Christ, he should remind himself of this. Just as he belongs to Christ, so do we. For if we boast some more about of our authority, which the Lord gave us for building up and not for tearing you down, I will not be ashamed. The word that was really standing out to me is powerful. That it's not like something you have to struggle with on our own efforts, but it's just like Debbie talked about moving to the stronghold of the Lord, finding him as a refuge, recognizing that we do belong to him. And that it's the knowledge of Christ that is freeing because it's his truth that sets us free. It's Amen. knowing that truth. Yes. And sometimes if we're afraid of truth, that in itself is a lie because the truth is such yes. a freeing thing. Yeah. And I recently posted on my Facebook that the freedom of truth is much sweeter than the comfort of lies. Amen. So if you're ever intimidated to ask the Lord about something, or if you don't think it's the right question, just ask it anyways. Right. Because even if it's the wrong question, he might ask you a question in return, and then you get sort of a, a change of thinking. It's like he's so tender with it. But at the same time, he is adamantly against everything that destroys you, everything that is against you, because his love is a fire, it is a flame, it is against evil. Just to realize that is the most loving thing, because even in this letter, Paul's writing to them, and he's saying to them, I don't want to terrify you with my letters, because he's writing some pretty strong stuff. But it, because he's furiously engaging something that he sees, the Corinthians is destroying them. He's seeing that they're sleeping with their mother-in-law, or just or being in the temple, or just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, they don't even know how to live like... Jesus. They don't even know how to live like who they are in Christ. And so he's saying, like, don't be intimidated. I'm just, I'm for your good. I, this is the authority of the Lord. And just to realize the most loving thing we can do is bring people out of that mire, bring people out of that. They may not like us right now, but it's so freeing when you're not dictated by the opinions of others. And this other phrase, the knowledge of Christ, it's not about this stuff right here. It's about the experience of his love. It's about the experience of him because he is love. He is truth. And to recognize that truth is not just a doctrine, but it's actually a person. It's actually Christ. And it's his spirit because his spirit is the spirit of truth. And to recognize that he has placed his truth inside of us so we can uh, be led forth by him. And you can recognize that truth because it says as when Jesus was raised from the dead, they didn't recognize him. They're like, he was crucified three days ago. They're just kind of talking to him like a stranger. Then he starts explaining the scriptures to them. And it, what does it say? That their hearts burned within them when he explained the scriptures to them. And that was where they saw it. They saw Jesus and everything. It wasn't just the knowledge of Christ, but it was the knowledge of Christ. <laughs> Because when you see him in the story, then you start seeing your reflection like a mirror. And then as you remember who you are, you remember your design. That he does not design you for evil, but he has made you for good. That he has fashioned you for his good pleasure. That we are actually made to do righteousness. I'm just going to go to Ephesians 1 because that's bringing something to mind to me. That he chose us. In him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love. And it says that he has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> to see that the way that he created us is good and that we are not lacking in anything. That we don't have to come and beg him for anything. We don't have to act like slaves. We just recognize that we're sons and daughters and that he is our father. 
And that changes the way that we approach life. That changes the way that we approach people. We're not trying to be in competition with them, but we're actually in conjunction with coordinating with them because we're not divided anymore, but we recognize that we're one body in Christ. If the foot's hurting, the hand's going to reach down and rub it. And when we care for people like we care for our own body, we're going to recognize if they're in pain. We're going to recognize if it's emotional or if it's a stronghold or if it's something physical where we could minister to that because we realize, oh, this, this affects me because this affects you. Because we are one in Christ. The knowledge of Christ. Wow. That his divine power has given us everything required for this life and godliness through the knowledge of him and called us by his own glory and goodness. For by these he has given us very great and precious promises that through them you may also share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in this world because of evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with godliness, godliness, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted because he has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you know them and you are established in the truth you have. I consider it right as long as I am the body tent to wake you up with a reminder, knowing that I will soon lay aside my tent, i.e. my body, as the Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. And I'll make every effort that you may be able to recall these things at any time after my departure. And there's this other scripture coming to mind, and it's about um, Christ within us, the hope of glory. And it says that was revealed, that was hidden for ages. And that's what he wanted all along. To realize that it's not a faraway thing, that he is right here. We could experience him right now, at any time, any place, anywhere. There's no distance from him. And just to recognize that there's no lack. Wow, he's given us all things. He's given us everything. And we could just be at peace in that even... If we're seeing like struggles or whatever, just to fix your eyes on Jesus. And sometimes we're just looking at the struggle. Oh my goodness, that's really hard. Oh my goodness, that's really hard. Oh my goodness. Okay, switch your focus. Oh, that's not so bad. I'm thinking like him now. 